Yo guys, we are back again with another video. Now, due to popular demand, we're going to be doing yet another Photoshop tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we're going to be showing you how you can make reflections. Um, so you can do sort of Photoshop art, but you can make things like lakes uh, and water, but you want to make it realistic. This is how you're going to do it. I'm going to show you basically all the little steps to go through how to do it. Okay, so before we go any further, I'm sorry if my voice sounds really weird. It's because I've got a horrible cold at the moment. Um, but we'll get through this. Uh, one thing I would like to say is it'd be great if you guys could go follow us on Twitter and also Instagram. The links are down below. Hopefully we're going to be hosting a giveaway soon. Um, so make sure you're following us on Twitter and Instagram. Definitely Twitter because we will be telling you all about it on there. So if you're not following us on Twitter, you'll probably miss out on the giveaway. Also, don't forget, check the links in the description where you can buy presets and also prints of photos. But without any further ado, let's get straight into today's video. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is download a file or an image or import an image that you have taken. I'm currently using a 1080 by 1350 canvas. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use. I'm just using it this size because that's what I suggest you use if you're doing it for Instagram. Basically, if you want to do a portrait photo, I suggest you use 1080 by 1350. Now, the first thing that you want to do is if you've got something in the background or down here that you don't want in your image, just come up to the marquee tool, select the part of the image you want to keep, um, and then come down to the select mask button and just click that and you'll see it deletes the bottom part. Now, where, you, where you're going to use that is when you have, for example, uh, trees or something down here, or let's say more mountains, but you want to create it. Basically, where you want to create your horizon line, cut off everything below that. Now the next thing you want to do is press Command J or Control J. Um, if that doesn't work, Control click, duplicate the layer, and make sure you duplicate it onto the same layer, and you can click OK and it'll do the exact same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to label this bottom one top and this top one bottom. That's very confusing, so I'm going to put the bottom one under the top and the top one on top of the bottom, otherwise it just gets weird. Um, okay, so that's now done. What we want to do here is press Command T or Control T. Again, if that doesn't work, so come up to Edit, Transform, uh, and you can click on flip vertical. If not, you can press Command T, Control click, and then do flip vertical. I think that'd be Control T, right click, flip, ver flip vertical for Windows. Uh, and basically, all you want to do is just move that down until they align perfectly. Basically, what you can see here is almost a reflection. Now, you've got two choices. One, you can move on from here and just leave it as that. Personally, I don't like that. I think it's kind of incomplete. All you need to do now is create a new canvas. Now, I'm going to create a new canvas that's 1080 by 1350, which is the same file size as this one. Um, I suggest, regardless of what size you're working on to start off with, you want to do the same thing. Um, and the reason for that being is you don't want to make a canvas that's too big, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so once you've done that, click on this little lock tool just to make sure this layer is editable. You want to press D on your keyboard, or basically reset these down here so it's black and white. Um, come up to filter, noise, add noise. Now, this is going to look really bizarre, but don't worry. Just make sure your amount's on 400% and you're on a uniform distribution, and then just click OK. OK, so the next thing you want to do is head over to channels, and all this does is split up our original layer, the layer 0 here, into its red, green, and blue separate channels. So come up to red, come up to filter, stylize, and click on emboss. For this, I suggest you put your angle on 90 degrees, your height on 50, and your amount on 500%. Basically, the only thing that you can really change on here is the height and also the amount, but to start off with, do it 95 and 50, sorry, 95 and 500, then just click OK. Once you've done that, come on to the green layer, do the exact same thing by coming up to filter, scrolling down to stylize, and then click on emboss. But this time, we're gonna put the angle to zeros and just click OK. Then turn back on the RGB layer, come back onto layers. You want to control click on that layer, make sure we can now edit it, so convert that to a smart object. Now, the reason I said make sure your canvas size isn't too large, so I wouldn't suggest doing 1920 by 1080, um, because this file size will end up being around one gigabyte. So if you make the canvas size a lot larger, you'll find that what happens is you have a massive file size and you can have issues saving it. Go to edit, scroll down to transform, and this time we're gonna click perspective. Okay, so now zoom out, um, and all we're going to do is we're going to drag out this bottom layer like this. In other words, it's going to look like these. this image is going into the page. Then click on tick, let that load, and zoom back in, and you should have an image that looks something like this. Okay, once this is done, just press Command T, and we're just going to drag this point here down to roughly where our horizon line is. So our horizon line is just below one half of the canvas size. So like I said, Command T, scroll down, and it's probably about there. 
So I'm just going to click maybe a little bit higher just in case it's not about there and then select tick or press enter just to place that. Okay, we are almost good to go. Now what we need to do is just save this. I suggest just saving it to your desktop. Basically, you just want to save the PSD file somewhere where you can easily find it. Come back onto your original um, document. You want to click on your bottom layer, i.e. the water layer, the thing that is being the actual reflection. You come up to filter, scroll down to distort, and then click on displace. Now, the settings you can use for displace are very different depending on what sort of look you're going for. Uh, I tend to find going for a horizontal scale of 4 and a vertical scale of 10 um, seems to work all right. I'm just going to put the vertical scale at 8 this time and we may have to mess around and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and then we're going to find the file that we saved earlier. So double click on the file that you saved earlier or just click open and you can see it's now going to place that on top of this image and there you go you can see it has made a ripple effect. Now unfortunately you can see here for some reason the ripples have stopped halfway. Now that will be because on this file we didn't move we moved this down too low. So we're going to come back onto here and we're just going to stretch this up probably to about there just to be safe. I'm going to resave that come back onto our original layer. So what I've done is I have duplicated this bottom layer um, and the plan is to make sure that this layer here, so if I turn off this top layer, it's just an identical layer of the reflection. The plan is to leave this bottom layer without any effects on it, but this top reflection layer we're going to displace, like I said before, with a 4 and 8 displacement, horizontal and vertical scale, um, and just click on our ripple. Okay, so you can see it's now created somewhat of a ripple effect, so this does kind of look like water. Now, this is basically done. The only thing I would suggest is sometimes you'll find that um, when you look at a lake, for example, in the background right towards the end of the image, so right at the edge of the water back here, you'll find that actually you can't really see many ripples. That's obviously because it's so far away. Now, in this image, the, you can still see the ripples going on here. Now there are two things you can do. One, you can keep on messing around with your ripples document here until you get this perfect. Basically you want to make sure the height is the same and it should work. The next thing you can do is what I've done is create another layer below it and also this top layer. You can then come down to select mask and you can just press your brush tool, decrease the brush size and make sure your brush is on uh, black and also hardness is on zero. And then literally just paint across like that and all we're doing is just getting rid of some of those ripples and I'm, all I'm doing is just brushing away those ripples with the feather on the brush so I'm not actually using the actual brush to get rid of it I'm just getting it away very gently with the feather radius of the brush. Now I don't want to end the video here there are a couple of things I want to say to you guys before you finish this one thing I could recommend you do is just create a new layer and add a little bit more atmosphere so say for example this is the obviously a sunset at this point in day the temperature is getting colder you may begin to see a little bit of mist appearing over there on the edge of the water um, you may not but it sometimes adds a little bit of a definition of where the land ends and the water begins so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer we're going to come down to here, make sure we've got depressed, we've got black and white selected. Come up to filter, scroll down to render, and select clouds. Okay, this time we're going to come up to the blending options and click on screen. And all that's going to do is get rid of all the black. Then we're going to do what we did earlier with the perspective, come to edit, transform, perspective. We're going to zoom out. And we're going to do the exact same thing, make it look like that is being stretched across the water. Leave that like that. Zoom in and drag by pressing command T drag that down to your horizon line which is there then come up to your selection mask press the mask button then um, one thing you want to do you can either paint and get rid of all of the mist and then paint it back in which is uh, one way of doing it alternatively you can just paint and get rid of the mist and just leave in what you want to keep which is what I'm going to do um, so at the moment I've got my brush on 100% uh, opacity and 0% hardness and I'm literally just going to decrease the intensity of this mist. Um, obviously this is going to be done incredibly quickly so by no means is this going to look perfect but I just wanted to show you what you can do just to make this a bit better. And I'm just getting rid of that harsh solid line that we're getting because of the flat image at the top. Now what I'm going to do for these more precise parts, I'm going to get my opacity of the brush and I'm just going to drag it down to about 20% and 
and I'm just going to keep brushing just to get rid of some of these patches of fog. I don't want it to be too strong and then don't do it completely uniform, have some bits that are darker, some bits that are lighter and just think about the way the fog's going to fall. Okay, so we're basically done. Now if I turn off the fog layer, you can see the difference that that makes to the overall image. It's actually quite a large difference. So that is it for today's tutorial. I know this was a really quick one, but I didn't have much time and I wanted to film you guys a tutorial video. I know a lot of you guys are interested in Photoshop. Now, if there are any future videos you guys want to see, just send us a message on Twitter um, and we will obviously answer you and see what you guys think. We do do polls and stuff on that, which is how I knew some of you guys wanted to see a Photoshop tutorial. So make sure you're following us over there and that's where we will contact you guys on video ideas. But in the meantime, don't forget to follow our socials down below. Check out those links, uh, but we'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.